as someone personally who has lived in Meduguri um, prior to the conflict and was around during the peak of the conflict and presently, it was very interesting to see how the study was able to um, really show how conflict shifted um, you know, the, the societal, um, the social, economic, and political um, dynamics. One major challenge um, we're facing as military residents is the unavailability of power supply in Medigui. Um, We've been cut out um, for power supply for over five months. Right now, insurgents have um, attacked um, the tower that is linking Medigui city to the national grid. And there have been several attempts by the transmission um, company to restore uh, the power back. In fact, in March, it was restored, but after barely 48 hours, insurgents um, attacked um, another tower. And this um, is causing a lot of um, hardship to residents of Medigree, especially business owners. Um, small business owners are really struggling to keep up business. Um, there are business owners that have closed down uh, because prices of goods have increased. Uh, people are not willing to pay more for services uh, because income has not increased. And it has also uh, affected access to water. Um, so because a lot of uh, majority of we residents don't have access to surface water, um, purchase water from water vendors. And because um, there is no availability of power, we need to, um, the water vendors equally buy um, diesel and foil to pump up those motorized boreholes and then um, definitely has increased the prices in water as well. So this um, challenge is, um, it's quite new, but um, you can see how it um, relates to the existing challenges, like insecurity, and also is, is compounding over um, you know, a lack of jobs already in the in Medubi city. Another um, major challenge facing Medubi residents is issue of flooding. So because uh, the city uh, population has increased due to urban displacement, um, due to so many people that are coming into the communities and, and low income. People um, tend to live in areas that are not included in the city plans. And so because there are cheaper houses to buy and to rent in those areas, in fact, there are community members that have to leave those houses every year like right now we are in the rainy season and there are community members that get displaced from these houses to go live elsewhere to with their family or friends in elsewhere and return back every um in the dry season so this happens um year in year out and then because these areas are not planned there is also unavailability of good drainage systems and then because of influx of so many people, there is congestion. That means there is um, unavailability of land to even dump um, waste. There is indiscriminate dumping of waste, um, even within the plant lands, because there are so many congestion, people usually dump their waste um, inside the drainage systems, So, which also um, exacerbates um, the vulnerability of flooding in, the, in our communities. So this is also a very um, key challenge that military residents are, are facing. And then also another key challenge um, facing military residents is unemployment. Unemployment um, issue is very huge. Um, so because already even prior to the conflict, this is an existing um, issue in military city. But with the conflict, um, it has increased that vulnerability because we don't have enough like industries to engage young people. We don't have enough um, vocational training centers um, to train women and also youths um, in those areas. So you can see how now the population is, we have so many IDPs without any skill set. Um, only farming. There are no um, avenues from the government to train these um, individuals or to even give them startup capital. And then we already have existing youth, especially young people that are out of school without jobs 
and without um, business um, to start up. Something that uh, can be done um, to address these challenges is for the government of um, Borneo State to update its city plans um, into those areas that are unplanned, because those areas that are planned are already inhabited by people, so it should be updated into the city uh, plans. And that will also equally address the issue of good uh, drainage systems and also roads and will resolve the issue of um, flooding. Another area that the government could do to address this challenge is to establish a good um, sustainable economic plan to establish industries, establish um, vocational training centers to engage youth and women, especially also. Um, in different skill set. This will definitely um, reduce um, idleness amongst the youth, um, which reduced criminality, which will also reduce you know, extreme um, violent extremism because it's also another way that um, youth are being recruited into the insurgents because of uh, unavailability of jobs. ACRC can look into um, the governance structures of Mikri City and look into local governance um, problems and issues and come up with um, locally driven solutions. I feel like if that can be researched well and communities will be empowered to, and government will be empowered to, to create platforms for good engagement between communities and also their, their government representatives. To properly engage like a town hall meeting where both will sit down, the um, community members will be able to um, prefer solutions to problems, be able to identify their needs and preferences, and equally, the government stakeholders will be able to also provide effective services, and they know that the communities will be able to hold them accountable to that um, sort of mechanism. Um, definitely, I think, um, solve um, the issue around social accountability. ACRC can also look into durable solutions because um, on how IDPs will be reintegrated and integrated back into their communities or well, those that are willing to stay in Medupi. So right now, there are IDPs that have been returned back to their communities by the state government. And it's important um, to actually um, research on that so that best approaches to durable solutions will be um, researched on and used as an advocacy tool for the government. Because right now, the IDPs are being returned back into their communities without proper consultation. So it's important for ACRC to also look towards global solutions, best approaches and understanding so that we can use it as an advocacy tool for the government to properly understand.